The newly sworn in governor of Bochi State, Mr. Bala Mohammed, has performed his first assignment on the first day at work. He received a report from an economic advisory committee he set up as governor elect. The committee, chaired by Professor Usman Bagaje, Bugaje, rather, completed its work within six weeks, produced a three volume report, including an executive summary that contains collated ideas, programs of action, and a set timeline for achieving the transformative agenda that seeks to improve the quality of life of the people. They are there to advise us on the harvest of knowledge and the leadership recruitment that we are going to have in a manner that will enable us to bring people based on competence, based on capacity, irrespective of where they come from, so that we can make Bochi a model in Nigeria. And so the beginning has just started. The submission of this report is just the beginning. I intend with all humility and to crave the indulgence of our professor and the team that I would want to convert them or to convert themselves into a group. The Uyul State Governor, Mr. Shay McIndy, says he remains committed to walking his talk and to that end, directed that all levels being paid by secondary school pupils should stop with immediate effect. He also directed, through his newly appointed Chief of Staff, B.C. Ilaka, that all chairmen of local governments and development areas are relieved of their post immediately. The chairmen were ordered to submit all official documents in their care to heads of local government administration in their respective local governments across the state. The release was signed, uh, directed that all accounts of the state and local government be frozen immediately. Meanwhile, the Oyo State leadership of Algon, they've reacted, saying the move is unconstitutional and illegal and uh, also contemptuous to an existing court order restraining the governor, House of Assembly, or any individual to dissolving elected council officials. And at a press conference that took place at the NUJ Press Center, the group said it would pursue every legal means to ensure their rights and not trampled upon. His Excellency, the Governor of your State, Engineer Olu Imakide, has directed as follows that all local government authorities, local council development area authorities be dissolved with immediate effect. We, the democratically elected local government chairman, under the umbrella of Argon or your state, reject this unconstitutional act. Well, to take a closer look at some of these issues and talking about how the state governors are kicking off their works on the first day in office, we talked to a political scientist, Professor Gideo Fouadibe. He joins us via our Abuja studio. Um, if we can, okay, great to see you. We'd like to thank you for joining us at this time. Um, tell us, pray tell, a new dispensation for governors. Um, what are your thoughts on some of the actions some of these governors have taken in the last couple of hours? Uh, since May 29? Well, the first thing is that they've given the impression, most of them, that they are going to hit the ground running. That's very interesting. And uh, they're coming in with a lot of energy. They are coming with, uh, you know, with a lot of uh, ambition. How this works out as they go midway, as they face the challenges of governance, uh, is too early to tell. But let me comment briefly on what happened in Imo State. Uh, however it goes, in my own opinion, it's not very good for a good beginning for Ihedioha. I'm not a fan of Okorocha by any means, but I, I think the incoming governors should be very aware of the fact that, uh, or rather they'll be very conscious of the effervescence of power, the ephemerality of power. You know, those that are living, when they, they first entered, as they are doing, or just they did on 29th May, probably had all sorts of energy, all sorts of, some of them, uh, virgin on vendetta. We have to be very careful, very careful. Uh, in the case of Imo State, if uh, he had your says he did not know um, the people that were behind that demolition, the impression will be given that he was not in control. However, it's uh, viewed, I don't think it's a very good way to start. You don't start by looking backwards. You look forward uh, because the impression might be created that uh, he started with a vendetta 
naturally, if you're elected as governor or president, there will be forces around you that will insist on exerting a pound of flesh. Uh, it's, well, it was a tough electoral competition, but that's where he has to exert the force of his personality. Even if he has to revisit past projects of the former governor, it's not, it's not going to be immediate. He has to have time and reflect over a couple of things, be able to retain good ones, and then to discard the other ones. He spent money to erect the structures. If he feels he's not serving his purpose, then he has to come up with alternative ideas. I do not pe personally like the idea that, you know, you start by making the legacies of your predecessors. Power is very ephemeral. Your state Sooner than now. Later, he uh, Professor Adibe, if you can hear me, pardon my interruption. Let's take a yes, look sir. at all your state and um, what the governor there has said, dissolving the local government councils, the LCDA, uh, the LGAs, and then Argon reacting and saying, uh, you know, uh, the, this is in court. Um, what do you make of that move by the governor? I think the, constitutionally of, the constitutionality of the governor's action is questionable. Uh, for elected uh, local government uh, chairpersons to be rem uh, suspended or removed that way, it raises questions. You know, it is constitutionally a third tier of government under our laws. But as you said, uh, it's the matter is in court. Let's see how it's resolved. I am also actually very, very concerned. Some of them have come up with very, very good way of giving hope. One governor has said, look, the quality of education in Ogun State is not what it should be, I'm going to do something about it. That's forward looking. But to start by trying to undo uh, the legacies of your, your opponent, however, your misgivings about them, I don't think that should be the way to go. Another thing we we're really seeing need is... To go Another thing we're seeing is, um, you know, that they're taking some time uh, to form their cabinet. Um, why do you think this is? I mean, how long do you think they need to uh, really inform the states that they're ready to, to kick off the business of governance in their states? Yes, yeah, some are already announcing members of their cabinet. And even if you don't announce your cabinet immediately, it should have been announced because they, they had at least almost two months since they were declared governors elect. There are certain key positions that do not require approval or confirmation by the state legislature. Such positions ought to have been announced, at least some of them. Secretaries to state government, chief of staff. One has to give that impression that, sense, that there is a sense of urgency. And that becomes the way you are perceived. What are you taking the whole time in the world for? You worked with a certain number of people. You know their capabilities. Uh, yes, there are political IOUs. Yes, there will be pressures on you to put this man and remove this person. But in the final analysis, you, there are still key people that you've made up your mind to work with. They, those will be the drivers of your key policies. And I will expect that uh, the governors who have come up with something reasonable now. Some of, many of them have done so, are announcing, but there are quite some that are lethargic, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, we'd like to thank you so much, Professor Judith Fouadibé, political scientist. It's always a pleasure to have you join us on the program, and the eyes also uh, with regards to the president and indeed when he will be forming his cabinet.